somebody who's like, oh, this really cool band that's done all these late night shows, festivals, toured around the world, whatever. They're playing a pop up show. I was like, okay, that sounds awesome. You don't have to, you know, tempt me with a good time. But sure enough, that was the first time I ever saw Vintage Trouble. We got some downtime right now in the studio. I've got Matt who's ready to work on whatever we put in front of him. Would you guys want to come in and do a cover? Rick, bass player, uh, responded in like 10 minutes. He was like, yo, let's do this. Like, it's a no-brainer. That's what's interesting about covers is it's not just about you anymore. It's not your song, and obviously it can be in the way you interpret that song. Um, but I think it's important to be, you know, where there should be some sort of nostalgic value for the players involved. Matt has always had a really good way of hearing a band and coming up with songs that fit well and that he knows he could knock out of the park uh, production-wise. A lesser band could have f***ed us up. But you know what? You just made me think about this song a little bit differently and put a new spin in. And I, you know, I've listened to this thing a million times before, but now I'm, I'm excited about it again. So the initial thought was that I would uh, try to get drums and bass at the same time and try to get that groove together. One thing I hadn't anticipated was that the the bass, which is doing this really, -da 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 -da, you know, it's just really kind of, I call it a complex part. And Rick's playing that with his fingers, the guy's a phenomenal player. It also kind of requires all the parts around it. There's there's heavy uh, bongos in the original. We, we used congas and a tambourine kind of part going throughout the thing. And, and it's really all these rhythms that come together to make that feel. Not only is the, the tracking room open, but it's open to the control room. It just feels like, to me, that it was heaven. It's like the greatest room scenario that I've ever been in. Matt is just great, easy, easy going, super, super knowledgeable. I kept stripping back what Richard was doing with the drums because I wanted to do overdub so I can really place things in the speaker. Drums sound incredible, man. You got all these great drums on the walls and uh, uh, lining the walls. Yeah. And I brought my great drums, which I'm like, my drums are so great. And uh, I just kind of started looking at everything else going, I'll take one of these and I'll try this. And you and you like the kick drum sound on that? Let's go with that. This is a beautiful, real live room with just a live vibe that you can sit and look at your boys, you know? Say it, say it! Uh -huh. Ty like pre-comps himself, so what'll happen is that he'll like sing a phrase like three different ways to himself, listen to it, pick the best one, and then duplicate that when we go to record it. I've actually never seen anyone do that before. He was punching in syllables at one point. It was pretty incredible. Oh, boy. Again. Oh, boy. Instruction. It's one of the most stylish oh, studios, and right away when your surrounding is different, it makes you feel like you're going to create something different. So, you know, we seep our music in the 50s and 60s and 70s. So for us, right away to walk in here, it felt like we were at home and, and that we were going to be on a, on a carpet that was going to um, float us into some magic. May young man is real, made him disabled. Better and mean. One more time. For the guitars, we kept all the takes off the initial floors and then referenced those for the guitar tracks. Nolly had brought in a Fender Blackface Deluxe Reverb and I've got a really great uh, 64 Fender Vibrolux amp, Vibrolux Reverb. Well, I said, look, I think if you are let me, we should check out this Vibrolux. If we don't like it, we'll put it back on the wall. So he pulled it out and he played through it a little bit and he's like, whoa. Yeah, let's let's do this. There was no EQ, no nothing. It was just Mike Pre writing to Pro Tools. You just forget how easy it can be sometimes when you have a great player, great guitar, great amp, great microphone. You just capture it.
I really miss this, you know. I, I, like I said, but everybody's having home studios, you're isolated and you're dealing with yourself. There's something to walk into a place like this and go like, oh, we can set up together and, and there's, you know, a proper producer, engineer that knows what he's doing. We're, we're definitely planning on taking that to another level and figure out better quality. It's about sending out streams because obviously there's so many bands now that are doing this. It's the only way to make things happen right now. So I think the audience start getting pickier and pickier about quality and, and how it works streaming wise. You know, you got to take this to a whole new level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 